take on the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. Brian Rushing here with you. So glad you could join us on this Tuesday night. The last time that we were here together, it was the playoffs as the Hickory Crawdads would fall two straight games to the Greenville Drive in the South Division Championship Series. Of course, that came on the heels of the Hickory Crawdads having a phenomenal second half of the season as they would put together a 43-21 and second half record and go five and a half games beyond the Bowling Green Hot Rods to win the second half of the division. Of course, the Greenville Drive had a very good first half of the South Atlantic League South Division as they were get, able to get the playoff bid early. And then from there, the Crawdads would face up against the Drive. It was a magical year for the Drive, as it turned out, as they were able to sweep away the Hudson Valley Renegades to win the South Atlantic League Championship. Tonight should be a lot of fun. For the first time in almost a decade, we're going to have a regular season broadcast here on both MILB.TV as well as Hickory Crawdads. Com. When we come back in just a little bit, we'll get a little more familiar with one another. We'll have the starting lineups and everything that you need to know to get us to 6 o'clock as it's opening night in the uniform. We'll be back on the Crawdads Radio Network. And we welcome you back here to LP Fran Stadium on opening night. The rain has finally gotten through the Western Piedmont of North Carolina. As the rain stopped rolling here about 3.30, we did have a couple of drips throughout the course of the afternoon. Of course, there was no batting practice this afternoon for both clubs. They took everything to the cages in the covered cages just beyond the left field corner here at LP France Stadium. Crowd still rolling into what is going to be what should be a very interesting opening night. This is a Hickory Crawdads club that found very little offensive success against the Rome Emperors. The Rome Emperors have not changed affiliations. They're still affiliated with the Atlanta Braves. They've just gone from the Rome Braves to the Rome Emperors. As the Rome Emperors had the better of the Crawdads over the weekend as they allowed one run to the Crawdads. Of course, the Crawdads here at home have every intention of putting up more pronounced offensive numbers throughout the course of this 2024 season, and in particular, this six-game homestand. Tomorrow, we're going to be on very early. It's an 11 a.m. start right here at LP Fran Stadium. So make sure that you are ready to go for a little early day baseball between the Crawdads and the Blue Claws. And then, of course, Thursday, Friday, Saturday will be a 7 o'clock start time, 2 o'clock on Sunday as they open up their home slate here against Jersey Shore. Let's go ahead and take a look at the starting lineups for your Hickory Crawdads this afternoon. Leading off will be the shortstop, Cam Cawley. He'll be followed by Tucker Mitchell, the first baseman, Sebastian Wolcott. Well, bat third, he'll be the designated hitter, of course, one of the 10 prized prospects in the Texas Rangers organization. Jason Morabell will bat cleanup. He's in right field. Anthony Gutierrez will bat fifth over in center field. Quincy Scott gets the start in left field. He'll bat sixth. 
Ben Blackwell will bat seventh. He'll be at second base. Ian Muller will bat eighth. He's the catcher. And Jace Easley will bat ninth. He'll be over at third base this afternoon. So recapping the lineup for the dads this evening, Collie Mitchell Walcott, Morabell, Gutierrez Scott, Blackwell Muller, and Easley. Mitch Bratt, left-hander, will get the start this evening for the Hickory Crawdads. We come back on the other side of the timeout. We'll take a look at Jersey Shore, their lineup, and everything that you need to know as we get closer to a 6 o'clock start this evening here on the Crawdads Radio Network. We'll be right back. We welcome you back here to LP France Stadium, just mere moments away from getting things started this evening. And it's opening night, so obviously the play ball kid is going to be incredibly enthusiastic. It looks like we might actually get this one started just a couple minutes early, so I'll go ahead and forego the final break that we had scheduled before starting the action. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Jersey Shore Blue Claws out of Lakewood, New Jersey. Now, this is a club that recently was known as the Lakewood Blue Claws, still the high A affiliate for the Philadelphia Phillies. However, they have decided to go with the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. This is going to be their starting lineup this afternoon. Amarian Boyd, left fielder, will get the start. He'll be leading off Justin Crawford. Well, bat second, he's in center field. Felix Reyes will bat third over at first base. Jordan Disson will bat cleanup for the blue for the blue claws. He'll be the catcher this afternoon. Brian Rincon will bat fifth. He'll be over at shortstop. Cade Fergus will bat sixth at right field. Zach Arnold will bat seventh over at third base. Troy Schreffler will be the designated hitter this afternoon. And Eric Brito will bat ninth. He'll be over at second base. Lineup again, Boyd Crawford, Reyes, Disson, Rincon, Fergus, Arnold, Schreffler, and Brito. Braden Fosnott, the left-hander, will be on the bump for the Blue Claws this evening. As it should be a lot of fun tonight, opening night. Going to be a little cloudy, going to be a little cool. Uh, yesterday was really nice outside. We've got some great weather coming for the weekend. However, we're going to get started this evening temperatures are going to be hovering right around 60 61 degrees as it has been rain cooled throughout the course 
of this afternoon and evening. I want to let you know of something that we're going to be doing throughout the course of the broadcast this season with the Hickory Crawdads and the Crawdads Radio Network. I'm going to make virtually every broadcast that we have an interactive broadcast, a chance where you can check in with us, let us know where you're tuning in throughout the course of the season. If you've got a question for me, I would absolutely love to hear from you. you whether you're here in the stadium, whether you're listening from far and yonder, would love to hear from you. You can do that in a couple of different ways. You can send an email to me. As I have a Hickory Crawdads email address now, it's brush at hickorycrawdads.com. That's what I'll be known as for the rest of the year, Brian Rushing or brush, brush at hickorycrawdads.com. Com. Of course, you can also find me on X or Twitter as the Hickory Crawdads come running out to man their defensive positions here in the opener of this 2024 home season. You can find me on X or Twitter at What's Up B Rush PXP. That's What's Up B Rush PXP, stands for play by play, as we'll be able to interact with one another. Would love for you to follow me on X or Twitter. Let me know that you're tuning in. This evening, if you've got any questions for me, would love to hear from you. I'll do my best to give you good answers, good information throughout the course of the season as starting pitcher Mitch Bratt is on the bump, getting loosened up for the world champion Texas Rangers High A affiliate, the Hickory Crawdad. So glad that you could join us on this Tuesday evening as we'll be getting started here any second Let's go ahead and go through the defensive alignment this afternoon for the Hickory Crawdads. Quincy Scott will get the start over in left field. Anthony Gutierrez in center field. Jason Morabell will be over in right. Jace Easley will be over at third base. Cam Colley at short. Ben Blackwell at second. Tucker Mitchell over at first. Ian Moeller will get the start behind the dish for Mitch Bratt. Mitch Bratt, I mentioned... A left-hander. So this young man getting an opportunity to make his first start on the season. As Mitch Bratt comes in, a left-hander, six foot two inches tall, 210 pounds. Graduate, I mean, I should say, was born on July 3rd out of Newmarket, Canada. A fifth-round draft pick. 2021. It's the throw down to second. We're about ready to get started this afternoon. His leading off will be Amarian Boyd. Amarian Boyd, an 11th round pick out of 2022 out of Batesville, Mississippi. Last year spent some time in the Florida State League affiliate with the Clearwater Threshers. Now, just a few years ago, Clearwater and the Florida State League was the high A affiliate. And, of course, the South Atlantic League was the A affiliate. Since then, the, the evolution of minor league baseball, the reconfiguration of minor league baseball, right in around the time just before COVID, South Atlantic League now a high A affiliate. First pitch for Mitch Bratt. It's fastball, misses inside, and we're underway. 5.59 is when we'll get started this evening. Of course, with the pitch timer, these things should move quite feverishly. Is that pitch down the middle taken for a strike? Count evens at one and one. Jersey Shore wearing the gray jerseys this evening with blue claws written across the front of the jersey in a powder blue. It's the pitch from Bratt. Misses inside. Count goes to two and one. Gray pants with a red piping stripe, red helmets. They're going to wear the powder blue hats with the red bill and the surfboarding crab on the front. That's the line. That's the uniform of the Jersey Shore Blue Claws for this evening. The Crawdads wearing the white pants. They're wearing the red Crawdads jerseys with the red hats, the H and the Crawdad interlocking with the black bill. Two ball, two strike count. Here's the pitch. That ball's going to get lifted foul up and out of play. The crowd still getting to the ballpark 
We'll have our first race for a foul ball in the concourse area. And unfortunately, because of the rain earlier, we had a little bit of a splashdown after it rolled into the first row, splashing one of the fans that are here this evening. 2-2. Here's the delivery from Bratt. Is that ball lifted into very shallow center field, drifting over will be Ben Blackwell. He'll make the catch. And we've got one out here in the ballgame. That's going to bring up Justin Crawford, center fielder. Justin Crawford out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Spent some time in both Lakewood, New Jersey, as well as Clearwater, Florida. It's a split time between the A and high club. That's the pitch from Bratt. Misses outside. Justin Crawford, first-round draft pick last year out of Bishop Gorman High School. It's Crawford. His pitch shoots it foul over to the left side. 61 degrees, our first pitch temperature this evening. So glad that you could join us here on the Crawdads Radio Network. Brat the 1-1. Misses outside. Count goes to 2-1. and one. Brad has the sign. From Muller, here's the pitch. Is that ball's going to get lifted foul? Justin Crawford, left-handed hitter. Of course, Justin Carl Crawford, the son of Carl Crawford, who spent 14 seasons in the major leagues, primarily with the Tampa Rays. So I can remember watching Carl Crawford play for the Durham Bulls in the AAA International League, which doesn't really seem all that long ago. But Justin Crawford, his son, is on the field here at L.P. Fran Stadium. A 100 average so far on the season for young Crawford. Here's the 2-2 from Mitch Bratt. Wheels and fires. That pitch is going to be lifted foul again. If you've never seen Justin Crawford play, very similar attack styles at the plate to Carl Crawford. Justin, if he's anything like Dad, incredibly athletically gifted. It's the pitch, misses just outside, count goes full. Crawford wearing number 13 for this Blue Claws club. Here's the payoff. That ball is going to be lifted out into the left center field gap, and that's going to get down for extra bases. In fact, it's going to leave the yard. As that ball continued to carry, there's very little breeze here at the ballpark, and Justin Crawford just made it 1-0 as he went opposite field just underneath the Honda of North Carolina powerhouse sign to make it a 1-0 Blue Claws lead. Justin Crawford did a very good job of staying back on the baseball with the payoff pitch, and he was not beaten, and he hit it firmly. Solo shot for Justin Crawford puts the Blue Claws on the board. They lead 1-0 as that brings up Felix Reyes. As Reyes is going to foul one back to the screen. Obviously, through three games in the South Atlantic League, you would imagine that the pitchers may have the advantage, and certainly that's been the case throughout the entirety of the league so far. It's the leading hitting team in the league is hitting at about 254. Bratt is offering. Swing and a miss. Reyes falls behind one and two. (laughs) 
Reyes waits. Bratt. Did he connect? No, he did not. Did he commit? Yes, he did. Strikeout. It's the first of the ball game for Mitch Bratt. And there's two down in the inning. That'll bring up Jordan Disson. Disson, 12th round pick out of 2022 out of Mission Viejo, California. Last year played in Clearwater. Right-handed batter is Disson. Disson has that one fouled into the seats and a near phenomenal catch made by a patron that made his way here pretty early. He's been sitting there for a while. Couldn't quite make the play, but he came away with the baseball nevertheless, and he gifted it to someone that was here to watch the contest. Is that breaking ball? Very nicely thrown by Mitch Bratt. The count now 0-2. Two Two down here in the top of the first inning. The Jersey Shore Blue Claws have the 1-0 lead off the blast from Justin Crawford. Here's the pitch. Fastball. Beat Disson. Two strikeouts for Mitch Bratt. Justin Crawford gets things going for Jersey Shore very early. His solo shot has made it. Jersey Shore won. The Hickory Crawdads coming to bat. You're listening. It's the South Atlantic League baseball action on the Crawdads Radio Network. We'll be right back. Bottom of the first inning. Crawdads coming to the bat for the first time at home in the 2024 season. So they'll face off against Braden Fosnott. Fosnott, a non-drafted free agent out of Westchester University by way of Danville, Pennsylvania. Played last year in Clearwater for the Threshers. It's Cam Colley, 083 so far on the season. As the trip to Rome proved to be not too enjoyable for the hitters. Scoring one run in the three contests, but things surely to get better here at LP France Stadium. You've already seen ball carries pretty nicely here. It's the pitch elevated from Foss, not misses. Two ball, two strike count. As the ball gets out onto the turf. Natural surface here at LP France Stadium. A beautiful 
field in which to play on. As that ball smashed right back through the middle. Fosnott couldn't get a glove on it. So it's a leadoff single for Cam Collett. So just like that, the Crawdads have a runner on base, and that's going to bring up Tucker Mitchell. Tucker Mitchell, young man out of Irving, Texas, 14th round pick out of 2021. Played last year for the Crawdads. Right-handed batter. 6'1", 215. Foss not. His offering, fastball just misses. 89 miles an hour on that fastball from Fosnott. Colley takes his lead over at first, holding him on his race. We'll get to the defensive alignment for the Blue Claws here in just a moment. We'll also reset the lineup for the Crawdads. Tucker Mitchell, Sebastian Walcott, top three in the order for the Crawdads. Cawley goes, pitches high, throw down to second. It's going to be in time. Cawley tried to get his right leg down onto the bag, couldn't quite do so before the tag is applied. He's cut down 2-4 for the first out here in the bottom of the first inning. Two ball, one strike count to Tucker Mitchell. So the pitch misses inside count now to three and one. For Tucker Mitchell. That three one from Fosnott. This is inside, and he'll draw the walk. So a free pass for Tucker Mitchell. That'll bring up Sebastian Walcott. Jason Marbell will bat fourth. Anthony Gutierrez, Quincy Scott, middle third of the order for the Crawdads. Ben Blackwell, Ian Moeller, Jace Easley, bottom third of the order for the Hickory Crawdads. Sebastian Walcott. The number three prospect in the Texas Rangers system. So I look very much forward to spending some time around him, watching his game, watching him in the cage. See what all the intrigue is about related to Sebastian Walcott. It's the pitch taken for a strike. Jersey Shore with the one nothing advantage here in the bottom of the first inning. Justin Crawford with the solo shot. Cam Cawley led off the inning with a single back through the middle, but he was cut down trying to steal at second. It's Walcott swings and misses. He falls. Strikeout victim, the first one of the ball game for Braden Fosnott. There's two down in the inning, and that brings up Jason Morbell. Morbell, a 167 average so far this season. As Morbell swings and miss or fouls it straight back to the screen. Morbell, 6'2, 230 out of Luperon. Dominican Republic. Played for the Down East Wood Ducks last year. Was a non-drafted free agent out of 2021. The pitch from the left-hander Fosnott. Breaking ball. Misses down. Count evens at one apiece. The ballpark here at LP France Stadium. 332 down each line. 400 in dead center. About 376 in the gaps. Morabell fouls the pitch straight back. About an eight-foot high wall that goes all the way around. 
There is a second tier wall and in right field a third and fourth tier wall, but all of that is beyond the playing surface and the wall. If it hits the back the back tiers, it's a home run. Two ball, two strike count to Jason Morbell. Two down here in the bottom of the first inning. Here's the pitch. Morbell checks it down to third baseline. Is it going to stay fair? It will not. As the ball rolled down the third baseline and hit the cut of grass, it was actually in the dirt, hit the cut of grass, and that pushed it foul. So Morbell, who could have very well gotten an infield single there and an excuse me swing, is going to have to go back and grab his bat and continue his at bat with a 2-2 count. Tucker Mitchell is the runner at first base with two down here in the bottom of the first inning. Foss not has the sign, checks the runner, the pitch, broken bat, rolled over to Reyes. Reyes will field it backhanded style, gets to the bag to retire the side. A single in the inning for the Crawdads. They're not able to do anything with it as we've played an inning. It's one nothing in favor of Jersey Shore. We'll be back in just a bit here on the Crawdads Radio Network. Back here at LP Fran Stadium, one inning in the books here on this Tuesday evening home opener for the Hickory Crawdads. Folks, Crawdad fans, all season long, Pete and Jerry's Home Run Eggs, the official egg partner of minor league baseball, invites you to show off your excellent moves in the Shelley's Shake Your Tail Feather Dance Off for your chance to win free eggs. Pete and Jerry's Eggs are in a league of their own. Their hens are free to frolic under sunny skies on small family farms, laying eggs with impeccable taste and quality. Find them at your local supermarket and bring them home today. Pete and Jerry's Home Run Eggs. Mitch Bratt back on the bump, inning number two. It's his first offering, taking down to Brian Rincon. Rincon has an RBI on the season. Jersey Shore Blue Claws Club. So Rincon takes the first uh, takes a 1-0 strike to even the counted one and one. Jersey Shore comes into this series with a two and one record. It's the pitch from Bratt taken for strike two by Rincon. Pratt, the pitch, fouled back up and over the rooftop here, out onto the concourse over on the first base side. So it'll be Rincon, Cade Fergus, Zach Arnold, 5 6 7 in the order for Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore over their weekend. Allowing 12 runs over the course of the three games, they scored 11 their own. So the breaking ball is going to actually get a piece 
Brian Rincon. And the hit by pitch will put him over at first base. And already, Chad Comer is going to come out and have a conversation with the home plate umpire this evening. As Cade Fergus will step to the plate. Comer not able to change the mind of the home plate umpire on this evening. Of course, the Hickory Crawdads offense was the bugaboo for them this past weekend against the Rome Emperors. It's the pitch to Fergus. They'll check down to the base umpire. Two-man crew this evening. The umpire now slotted between the pitcher's mound and where the second baseman would typically be stationed if there were no one on base. It's the pitch to Fergus fouled straight back. Hickory only allowed 11 runs in the three games. They scored just one. The Asheville Tourist went 2-1 and one in their series. Against Winston-Salem, they scored 29 runs in the three games. And still only managed to win two out of the three. It's a weird ball game. It's that ball. Swung on and missed. The throw down to second is going to get past the second baseman. It'll be picked up in center field. As Ren Cohn will stay at second with the stolen base. Ben Blackwell from the second base position tried to pick the throw that was a little short of second base. Couldn't come up with it. Rincon has the steal. One ball, two strike count with nobody down here in the top of the second inning. Cade Fergus, a 333 hitter on the season. Fergus, a 13th round pick. In 2022, out of Plantation, Florida. Played at George Washington. And that pitch at the knees. Fergus strikes out looking. It's the third strikeout for Mitch Bratt. There's, there's one, out, one out here in the top of the second inning. That's going to bring up Zach Arnold. Arnold, the 250 hitter. No homers, no RBI at this point. Arnold, the 14th round pick last year out of the University of Houston by way of Temecula, California. Spent some time in the Florida Complex League, formerly known as Gulf Coast, and then spent some time with the Threshers in Clearwater. Here's the pitch. Fastball cut on and missed. Brad gave up the one run in the top of the first inning, a solo shot opposite field to left center field, just over around the 376, 380 mark. Side ball set out into shallow center right field. Play is caught by Ben Blackwell. The throw in the second, not in time, is getting back is Brian Rincon. With two down, that brings up Troy Schreffler. Schreffler, the designated hitter. A 15th round pick out of the University of Maryland by way of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He split time between Jersey Shore last year and Clearwater. Here's the pitch from Bratt. That ball's going to be hit into shallow right field, drifting back and unable to make the play is the first baseman, Tucker Mitchell, and it's going to be 2-0. As that was a bloop over the head of Mitchell, Mitchell did all that he could to try to track back to the right field and make the play. Couldn't do it. So it'll be an RBI knock for Schreffler, and it's 2-0 in favor of the Blue Claws. And that brings up Eric Brito, second baseman.
throw over to first. Nothing happening there. An amateur free agent is Brito out of Ciudad Guiana, Venezuela. Split time last year, like many of these guys did, between Clearwater and Jersey Shore. It's the pitch, misses outside, throw down to second, and they're going to call Schreffler safe as he did the swim move to get out of the way of the tag. Ben Blackwell is certain that he put the tag on him. Chad Comer is certain there was a tag applied. And if anything else, Comer's going to argue that the ball beat Schreffler there by so much that it really is unseemly that a call like that would go against the Crawdads. Comer, again, not going to get much satisfaction out on the base paths. The Schreffler is going to be down at second with the stolen base. Schreffler leaned in with the left hand, and then just before Blackwell was going to lay the tag down, switched over to his right. Somehow was able to maintain the second base back. It's the pitch from Bratt misses down. Single runs for Jersey Shore here in the first and the second inning have given them the 2-0 lead. Bratt, the pitch, just misses. Count goes to 3-0. and The fastball finds the outer third to work the count to three and one. The runner down at second is Troy Schreffler. Ben Blackwell minding him just a little bit, trying to keep him a little closer to the second base bag. So three one hits sharply back through the middle. Schreffler's going to try to score the throw coming in from center field. It's going to be down the line, and it's three nothing in favor of Jersey Shore. Eric Brito with an RBI single. And just like that, Jersey Shore has flipped the order back around to Amari and Boyd. And that's going to force a conversation with Jose Jaimez, the pitching coach for the Hickory Crawdads. Of course, tonight here at the ballpark, for those of you that are still planning on making your way out, or for those of you that might already be here and aren't aware, it's Dollar Dog Night in the ballpark. As you've got an opportunity to pick up a couple hot dogs, maybe a pop, do it for about six bucks. Make an evening of it. Bratt, the delivery. Breaking ball. Misses. Count goes to 1-0. and out. Bratt, the 1-0. Poured over the middle for a strike to even the count at one ball and a strike. Eric Brito, the runner, down at second, who advanced to second on the throw from center field that was actually down the line. Boyd, his first time up, popped to second. Here's the pitch from Bratt. It's that ball. Hits the third base bag and is going to roll into shallow left field. Brito's going to score easily. Amari and Boyd is going to get in under the tag, and it's 4-0 in favor of Jersey Shore. Jace Easley was ready to make a backhanded play and throw across the infield. However, it was not to be as it hit right on top of the third base bag, ricocheted over his head, and then out into left field about 200 feet away from home plate. 
It's going to be a double for Boyd. He gets the RBI, and just like that, the home folk have been subjected to a three-run second inning, which has quickly made it 4 nothing. Justin Crawford at the plate who got the offensive party going for Jersey Shore with an opposite field solo shot. As that ball is going to get lifted out into left field and drifting back to the track. It's going to be Quincy Scott. He'll make the catch to retire the side, but not before Jersey Shore puts up a three spot on three hits. They have a 4 nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the second here on the Crawdads Radio Network. We'll be right back. Bottom of the second inning, Anthony Gutierrez, Quincy Scott, Ben Blackwell, 5-6-7 in the order, will bat for the Crawdads here in the bottom of the second inning. A three-run second inning has given Braden Fosnott all of a sudden a four-run advantage here on this cloudy evening. The rain has rolled out which means hopefully we're going to have a better day tomorrow than we had today. The rain rolled through overnight, and it was pretty persistent. Didn't rain a heavy, heavy amount, but it was a steady drip as that ball driven out to left center field. As that ball is going to make its way off the wall, off the Lowe's food sign, it's going to be a leadoff double for Anthony Gutierrez. So Gutierrez gets an opportunity to improve upon that early 182 average. And that's going to bring up Quincy Scott. Quincy Scott, a ninth-round pick last year out of Escondido, California. Spent his time with the Wood Ducks last season. Scott, a 6'5", 220-pound young man who, if given the opportunity, certainly looks the part. No question about it. So that ball is going to be fouled back off the facade here, just off to my right. I have a feeling at some point this year, something's going to come up here toward this booth. I am directly behind home plate. So I may want to bring my glove in the event. It has to be called into action. Scott's going to shoot that ball over to the right side. Crowd still filing into the ballpark this evening. A lot of folks probably scared away by the, the rain or what was anticipated to be rain, but none of the forecasts that I saw for the Unifor had mentioned rain that was going to stretch beyond 3 o'clock, and sure enough, they did an initial tarp pull at 3, then they got rid of it for good at 4.30. We played on time. In fact, we started seconds earlier than our start time. 
As that ball's going to be lifted up and into the concourse area directly behind me. Off to my right here at this ballpark, you'll have some suites. You'll have the secret quarters for Conrad the Crawdad. Off to my left, you'll have the true press box area to where the official scores, the public address announcer, music guy, all that stuff is happening. I am directly behind home plate. Could not pick a better venue or a better vista in this venue to watch this baseball game. It's Gutierrez at second base. Here's the one-two pitch. Fast not. That ball lifted high into left field. Coming on will be Amari and Boyd. He'll make the catch and there's one down. The defensive alignment for the Blue Claws this evening. Boyd over in left field. Justin Crawford in center. Cade Fergus swung over in right. Zach Arnold over at third base. Brian Rincon at short. Eric Brito at second. Felix Reyes at first. Jordan Disson was the catcher for the Blue Claws. And that's going to bring up Ben Blackwell. Is the throw to second. Not in time as Brito was about to ready to deliver the, the baseball over to Brian Rincon. Fortunately, Anthony Gutierrez had gotten his hand under the tack. Gutierrez came just a few feet away from hitting the club's first home run of the season. Three clubs in the South Atlantic League without a home run at this point. Correction, five without a home run. Jersey Shore with Justin Crawford's blast in the first inning now have two on the year. It's Asheville as you might imagine, when you score 29 runs in three ball games, it probably came with a pretty sizable average. They're a 288 club hitting the baseball. Winston Salem hit 250. So that ball is going to be fouled out of the mid of the catcher. Jordan Disson. 4 nothing lead for the Blue Claws. Four runs on four hits, no errors for the Crawdads. 0-2-0 zero, zero for Ben Blackwell, a 143 hitter on the season. Here's the one-two from Fosnot. Instead, he's going to disengage and go to second. The crowd, anytime a pitcher lifts his leg and then decides to go to second, whether or not there was any reality in there being a balk, it's going to be called a balk by the patrons here. It's just a given. Gutierrez takes liberties over at second. That ball lifted high into right field. It's very playable. The catch is going to be made by Cade Fergus. Gutierrez trying to get to third, and he came off the bag, but Zach Arnold not able to hang on to the baseball. I mean, he came on off the bag for just a split second. Was able to get back. He's over to third with two down in the inning. That will bring up Ian Mullet. Moeller, fourth round pick in 2021 out of Dubuque, Iowa. 6'1", 215. Right-handed batter with an open stance. 143 hitter. It's the fastball at, from Fosnot taken for a strike, and the crowd did not agree. They thought it was out of the zone. The 0-1, this is inside. Muller has to get out of the way. Foss not. Pitch misses outside. They'll see if he committed on the swing. Did Muller? He did not. It's going to be very difficult for anybody to get that call 
on a committed swing or a check swing. The umpire slotted between the mound and the typical shortstop position. Gutierrez, the runner down at third. Here's the 2 1. So that ball's going to be lifted foul. It's going to rattle around over to the seats off to my right. It runs the count to 2 and 2. Crawd adds in an early hole here in the bottom of the second inning. Down 4 0, but a base knock here would put him on the board. Fastball. Misses. Count runs full to three balls and two strikes. So Moeller is going to call timeout. Adjust his batting gloves. So he had the free timeout. And so now we're ready for the payoff. Gutierrez taking a sizable lead over at third. He's in foul ground. The pitch. That ball hit sharply to the third baseman. And the catch was made. A little bit of a hesitation from the home plate umpire, but he finally made the indication that the line drive was snared in the air. That stymies the Crawdads rally. They leave a runner over at third. We've played two innings here at LP France Stadium. It's 4 nothing in favor of the Blue Claws. You are listening to the Crawdads Radio Network. We'll be back in just a bit. Top of the third inning here in Hickory. A 4-0 lead for Jersey Shores. Felix Reyes will lead things off, followed by Jordan Disson, Brian Rincon, 3-4-5 in the order for the Blue Claws. The high affiliate of the Philadelphia Phillies. Mitch Bratt's first offering to Reyes. Swung on and missed. Reyes out of the Dominican Republic. Splint time last year between Lakewood, New Jersey, and Clearwater, Florida. Bratt wheels and fires the 1-1. One, one. That fastball misses up. When the wind blows here at this ballpark, it typically is going to make its way out toward left center and center field. That's the prevailing wind here, and it makes the ballpark carry a little better than other ballparks. Is that breaking ball Reyes way out in front? Count goes to two and two. However, tonight, no breeze, none at all. Cloud cover, substantial. They're not ominous-looking clouds, but it is gray. No question about it. The 2-2. Reyes catches it on the outside edge. He's a strikeout victim for the second time in the ballgame. Mitch Bratt has five punchies in the ballgame. Correction make that four strikeouts in the contest. With one down, that brings up Jordan Disson, who struck out swinging to end the first inning.
Brad first offering, taken for a strike. And perhaps after being touched up a little bit in the second inning, he can settle in and put together a solid performance the rest of the way as that breaking ball fouled back to the screen. Four runs on four hits, no errors for Jersey Shore. Just two hits on the board for Hickory. The fastball from Pratt misses outside. This one came into the contest, a 200 hitter on the season, which has just started. A multi hit ball game, and you're right back in the swing of things. And that's blistered back up the middle, a shot to center field. Puts Jordan Disson on at first base with the fifth hit of the ball game for the Blue Claws. Of course, the Phillies have had a history in the South Atlantic League in different locations. For the longest time, the Phillies affiliate in the South Atlantic League was in Spartanburg, South Carolina. The Spartanburg Phillies played at Duncan Ballpark. It's the breaking ball taken for a strike to Brian Rincon. Rincon got the three-run rally going in the second inning when he was hit by a pitch. Spartanburg Phillies were in existence until 1993. That was the year prior to Hickory making their way into the South Atlantic League. They got their start here at L.P. Franz Stadium in 1993. The year before, they were known as the Gastonia Rangers, a Rangers affiliate in the South Atlantic League. Eventually that Rangers affiliate went to a different location and the Hickory Crawdads became a White Sox affiliate. It's the 1-1 offering taken for a strike. The runner at first is Jordan Disson. The club originally moved from Spartanburg to Kannapolis to become the Piedmont Bull Weevils for a short time. It's the pitch, just misses off the plate. Count goes to two and two. Then Dale Earnhardt, later in the 90s, got a controlling interest of the ownership of the club in Kannapolis, called the team the Kannapolis Intimidators, where the Kannapolis Intimidators, for the longest time after the White Sox lost their affiliation in Hickory, it's the ball hit down the left field line. It's going to get down for what could be extra bases. Getting over to third is going to be Jordan Disson. Rincon is going to have himself a one-out double. There's runners at second and third. That ball was not blistered. He didn't barrel it, but he got enough of it to keep it fair down the left field line. And that will bring up Cade Fergus. Once the White Sox affiliation moved from Hickory, they went to Kannapolis. And, of course, the Kannapolis franchise now known as the Cannonballers, still the affiliate for the Chicago White Sox as the infield is drawn in tight for the Hickory Crawdads. Fergus struck out looking his first time up. Here's the pitch. That ball blistered into left field. One run's going to score. They're going to hold up Rincon at third. It's an RBI single, three consecutive hits. For the Blue Claws, and it's now a 5-0 ball game. And it appears that the Crawdads bullpen could begin to stir here any moment. Zach Arnold to step to the plate. He popped a second. His only time up. The Blue Claws have scored in every run so far in this ballgame. One in the first, three in the second, now one here in the third. The runner at first goes. The throw down to second is not going to happen. It'll be a fake by Ian Moeller. Stolen base for Fergus. And now that eliminates the double play opportunity for Jersey Shore.
Here's the offering. Breaking ball misses down. Count levels at one and one. Here at LP Fran Stadium, there's not a ton of foul ground here. It's a very fair ballpark between hitters and pitchers. It's not a band box by any stretch of the imagination. It's certainly not cavernous by any stretch of the imagination either. So that ball's going to be fouled off to the first base side. A fair amount of foul territory. Again, this ballpark was built solely for baseball. So the dimensions very much favorable to baseball fans. The breaking ball rolled out to shortstop. Cutting it off at third is Jace Easley. They'll throw it over to third. Getting in safely to third is Cade Fergus, and it's 6-0. So it'll be a ground out. It's an RBI for Zach Arnold. There's two down in the inning. That brings up Troy Schreffler. Schreffler in the second inning, singled, stole a base, drove in a run, and scored. So this Blue Claws team has certainly had the better of it offensively in this one. As the pitch misses down. Already with seven hits in the ball game. It's Jersey Shore Club, a 237 team batting average through the three games. 23 hits in the course of 97 at bats was their mark through the weekend as Schreffler swings and misses. Count evens at one and one with two down here in the top of the third inning. So glad you could join us on this Tuesday night. So the fastball misses down. Breaking ball. Schreffler swings through it. Two ball, two strike count. Cade Fergus, the runner down at third. Has his lead in foul territory. The 2-2 from Bratt. Breaking ball, that's going to be driven out into right center field. It's going to split the two outfielders and roll all the way to the wall. Schreffler's going to have an opportunity to take a turn at second. He's going to try for three, and he gets in. An RBI triple for Troy Schreffler. And it's 7-0 in favor of Jersey Shore. For Jersey Shore, that is already their fourth triple of the season. Which tells you this club probably has a little bit of speed. Schreffler down at third base. He swaps places with Cade Fergus. And Troy Schreffler is off to a solid start in this six-game series between these two clubs. Last year, these two clubs faced off against each other for six games. Jersey Shore won four out of those six. It's the fastball taken for a strike to Eric Brito. Brito had an RBI single his only time up in the contest. It's the pitch lifted foul up over toward the BTS picnic deck.
like last year. The Brooklyn Cyclones not on the schedule for this Hickory Crawdads club. However, another club that will not play the Crawdads in the regular season, the Wilmington Blue Rocks. That ball grounded over to shortstop. The play made by Cam Cawley to retire the side. But another three spot here in the third for Jersey Shore has given them a 7-0 lead early here at L.P. Fran Stadium. We'll be back in just a bit on the Crawdads Radio Network. Bottom of the third inning here at L.P. Fran Stadium. Brian Rushing here along with you. So glad you could join us on opening night as I have the distinct pleasure of bringing 66 home games to you this season at L.P. Fran Stadium and select road games. By my most accurate number that I have at this point, right now we're looking at 21 road games that I will be bringing you on the on the internet radio side of Crawdads Radio Network by way of hickorycrawdads.com. It's the first offering to Jay Seasley taken for a ball. And Braden Fosnott is sitting in the proverbial catbird seat here as he's been staked to a 7-0 advantage. Fastball taken for a strike at 88 miles an hour. So Fosnott really has been given everything that he needs. Now he can just reach back and pound the strike zone. This Easley's ball lifted out in the very shallow right field coming in will be the right fielder, Cade Fergus, to make the catch, and there's one down. Folks, I want to give you an opportunity to reach out to me as we're going to do this with regularity throughout the course of this 2024 season. As we go back to the top of the order, Cam Cawley, who singled, was cut down 2-4, trying to steal in the first inning. We'll step to the plate. A couple of ways you can reach out to me. It's the first pitch fouled back to the screen. Let me know that you're tuning in this evening. You can find me through email, directly through the Hickory Crawd ads. It's the fastball. Cut on and missed. Count goes to 0-2. You can find me at B Rush, or if you just want to say brush, I guess that's fine, but it's B Rush at hickorycrawdads.com. B Rush at hickorycrawdads.com. Send me an email. Let me know where you're tuning in this evening. If you've got a question for me, I'd love to be able to have a chance to answer it. If you want to find me on Twitter or X, whatever you call it, one ball, two strike count, so the pitch misses up. Cawley, a one-ball, two-strike count. We'll wait on the pitch from Fosnott. That ball's going to get lifted out to right field, drifting back toward the track. And making the catch is going to be Cade Fergus. And there's two down. If you want to reach out to me on X or Twitter, you can do that at What's Up B Rush PXP. At What's Up B Rush PXP. Let me know where you're tuning in this evening. Would love to say hello to you over the airwaves. Again, if you've got a question or just want to say something about the broadcast, something that's been almost a decade 
since we were last here with you for regular season baseball action. You can find me on X or Twitter. And we can begin a conversation throughout the course of this 2024 season. Here's the pitch from Fosnott. Just misses outside. Tucker Mitchell, he walked his only time up. Here's the 2-0. Misses down. Now Mitchell in the driver's seat. Look forward to hearing from you throughout the course of this baseball season. The 3-0. That pitch fouled. The off-speed pitch taken for strike two. Count runs full to Tucker Mitchell. Two down here in the bottom of the third inning. Foss not. Wheels and fires. That ball's going to be lifted out into center field. Coming on, it's Justin Crawford. He'll make the catch to retire the side. A 1-2-3 inning for the Crawdads. We've played three here at L.P. Fran Stadium. It's a 7-0 lead for Jersey Shore. We'll be back in just a bit on the Crawdads Radio Network. Time of the fourth inning here at L.P. France Stadium. Three in the books, and it's been all blue claws. Jersey Shore has jumped out with a single run off a Justin Crawford solo home run, then followed it up by a three spot in both the second and the third inning. And that has forced a change on the bump that we'll get to in just a moment. It's the first pitch from Brian Chi. It's a pitch that misses outside to Imarion Boyd. Boyd one for two in the ball game, a pop to second, and an RBI double. So that ball is going to be driven out to right field. A sinking liner is going to be caught by Jason Morbell. So on the pitch. For the Hickory Crawdads, Brian Chi out of Havana, Cuba. Last year played for the Down East Wood Ducks, a non-drafted free agent in 2022. Chi, a right-hander. 5'11", 220. It's the breaking ball taken for a strike. So that closes the book. It's Chi. Swing and a miss. 
for Justin Crawford. Crawford has hit the ball well two times. He's got an opposite field home run to his credit. He's also hit a ball deep to left field. He does have some opposite field pop. That's very apparent from what we've seen here from his first two times at the plate. 0-2. This is high and outside. On this Tuesday evening, it's comfortable outside. It's actually raised a degree in temperature to 62, even though it's still cloudy here at LP Fran Stadium. As that ball hits sharply out to third under the glove of Jay Seasley. They had Crawford shifted a little bit off the line at third, and he's going to reach. They've scored that as a base knock. And that'll bring up Felix Reyes. Reyes has yet to put a ball in play this evening. He's 0-2 at the plate. So Chi holding on the runner. Justin Crawford over at first. Reyes waits as that ball is going to be chopped foul. Of course, tomorrow we're going to be with you really early. 10.45 will be the airtime for tomorrow's 11 a.m. contest. 11 a.m. So as soon as I'm done with my morning sports talk show down in the Gastonia, Charlotte area, I'm going to be heading up this way, and we'll have a little lunchtime baseball. As that ball flared into the seats. No one particularly interested in picking up the foul ball. It just kind of makes its way in a meandering fashion over to a patron. So he gets a souvenir out of the deal tonight. So we'll be on the air at 1045 for an 11 o'clock first pitch. Game two of the six-game set. And then from there, we'll have three consecutive games beginning at 7 o'clock. We'll air those games. Our pregame show will get started at 645. We'll come on 15 minutes before every first pitch, home and away, wherever. If we're on the road, it'll be 15 minutes before first pitch on the Crawdads Radio Network, and then we'll spend a, about 10 minutes or so with each other after the game's over. I'll give you a reset of what I saw, and then we'll call it a night. Crawford takes the lead over at first, being held on by Tucker Mitchell. One down here in the top of the fourth inning. It's the pitch to Reyes, misses inside the count. Works full. The Partisans, again, did not like that pitch being called a ball. The infield shifted over to the right-handed batting pull hitter. So that pitch swung on and missed. Reyes strikes out again. That's his third strike out of the ball game. For Chi, that's his first punch out. With two down, that's going to bring up Jordan Disson. The final line for Mitch Bratt was three innings. He gave up eight hits, seven runs. He hit a batter. He struck out four. Justin Crawford, the runner over at first. Two down at this and at the plate. It's Chi. Fires it in for a strike. Disson last time up, singled and scored in that three-run third inning. She sets, delivers, slider, misses. Count goes to one and one. It's Jersey Shore off to a flying start on this Tuesday night home opener for the Crawdads. One of 66 home dates on the schedule. That ball going to be rolled foul over on the third base side. Down toward the bullpen. Both bullpens are actually off the playing surface here at LP Fran Stadium. They're sequestered down in the corner. I'm sitting in an elevated perch, so I do get to be privy to some of 
the sidelines in the bullpen. If you're watching directly behind home plate, you're not seeing anything in the bullpen. This ballpark in its three full decades now of use here at L.P. Franz Stadium. Chi Crawford goes. That ball's going to be lifted foul and out of play. Crawford will return back to first. The Red Oak party deck, which is another party deck. You've got a party deck over on the first base side. you got a picnic deck just below it that's covered. The party deck is not covered. And then on the other side, you got a playground with a carousel. So whatever your age, whatever your desire, you can come out here and pretty much partake while you're watching a little bit of baseball. So that pitch misses in. Disson gets out of the way. She has the sign, 2-2 count. Here's the pitch. Side ball is going to be lifted up kind of close to this way, and it's going to land in a seat. And the race, or the lack thereof, is on. It's still April. Don't have as many kids out this time of the year as you typically would because school's in session. Maybe the zeal of chasing a baseball has been kind of lost over a a winter of not having an opportunity to do it. The 2-2, Crawford goes. As the pitch misses outside, the throw, not in time. Crawford has the stolen base. It's a Jersey Shore club that coming into this series stole six bases. Two per contest. Here's the payoff pitch from Chi. It misses outside. Disson draws the two-out walk. And that's going to bring up Brian Rincon. Rincon has been very busy on the base paths this evening. So he was hit by a pitch, he stole a base, he scored in the second, then he singled, stole a base, and scored in the third. She looks back to Crawford, delivers, pours that fastball right down the middle. Not familiar with every nook and cranny of Hickory. So I'm going to have to find myself a favorite thoroughfare here in town. Uh, Probably LR Boulevard. That's the one I absolutely do know. It's the count evens at one and one. So anytime someone, a pitcher, throws the ball right down the middle, we'll just go with LR Boulevard. The locals will know what I'm talking about. It's the pitch to Rincon. Catches the outer third. Works the count to one and two. These crawdads did play a local exhibition game against Catawba Valley Community College, which is a nearby community college in Hickory. It's the pitch misses inside. Count goes to two and two. This is a club that's played the Lenore Ryan Bears in previous outings. So they just try to give themselves an opportunity to get some work in prior to the start of the season. The offering is that ball. Rolled out to second. Blackwell fields it, gets it across in time to Mitchell. That's going to retire the side. The Blue Claws strand two runners. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 7-0 7-0 in favor of Jersey Shore. We'll be back in just a bit here on the Crawdads Radio Network.
Bottom of the fourth inning. About time for the Crawdads to get things going offensively. This would be a perfect time. Sebastian Walcott, Jason Morabell, Anthony Gutierrez, 3-4-5 in the order against Braden Fosnott. 7-0 Jersey Shore, but time is still early. On this Dollar Dog Tuesday, I actually had one here at the ballpark. You pretty much have to on opening night. As Walcott takes the pitch down. Count evens at one and one. Fosnott has been staked out to a very early lead. The offense has been clicking, and he's been doing work on the bump. Here's the one-one. As Walcott swings and misses. For those of you that are curious, and some of you out there on social media, I'm sure are, yes, you can make it a chili dog with chili. You can get cheese. You can get slaw. That's going to cost you a little extra, but when the, when the dog's a dollar, I mean, it's not a big deal. That ball hit out to center field. Justin Crawford drifting back a couple steps shy of the track. There's one down. And that's going to bring up Jason Maribel. I told you, folks that I was going to give you an opportunity to reach out to me by way of social media, whether it is X or Twitter, or sending an email my way. Well, I'm going to honor my promise here in these middle innings. Foss not. This is outside. Morabell grounded to first. His first time up. I do want to say hello to Jeanette Gist who's tuning in from Abilene, Texas. As that ball's going to be rolled out to the right side, Reyes is going to flip to Fosnott. The PFP working smoothly in the Phillies camp. And there's two down. That'll bring up Anthony Gutierrez. So, Jeanette Guest from Abilene, Texas, thank you for joining me on this Tuesday evening. Thank you for being a part of this opening night of the Hickory Crawdads broadcast. It's that simple, folks. You send me an email, brush at hickorycrawdads.com. You say hello. I'll return the salutations. It's the pitch to Gutierrez. A little off speed. Taken for a strike. Gutierrez hit the ball to left center field near the Lowe's food sign. Almost got out of the ballpark. He had a double. So that pitch misses outside. Count evens at one and one. Throughout the course of this baseball season, we're going to start working on a podcast that we're going to do as that ball hits sharply over to third. Zach Arnold not going to be able to get a throw over in time. As he played it off his body, we'll wait for the score. Gutierrez reaches. And that's going to be a base hit. As it was a funky hop over to Arnold that he got in front of, it just trickled away from him too far for him to really make a throw. And that's going to bring up Quincy Scott. He flew out to left field his only time up. So we've got a two-out base runner. That ball's lifted out to the right field corner, and it's drifting back. And at the base of the track, the catch is going to be made by Cade Fergus. A base knock for Gutierrez. He's got a multi-hit game going. We've played four innings here at LP France Stadium. It's 7-0 in favor of Jersey Shore. We'll be back in just a bit here on the Crawdads Radio Network.
Top of the fifth inning here on this Tuesday night in Hickory, North Carolina. So glad you could join us. Brian Rushing here with you. The Jersey Shore Blue Claws have a 7-0 lead. Brian. It's Brian Chi, the reliever. Pitched the first scoreless inning of the ball game for the Crawdads as they kept Jersey Shore off the board in the fourth. As it will be Cade Fergus, Zach Arnold, Troy Schreffler, 6-7-8 in the order. It's the pitch from Chi taken for a strike. Fergus, one for two in the ball game. He struck out looking his first time up, then singled, stole the bag, and scored in that three-run third. The breaking ball misses outside. Count goes to two and one. As the ball rolled foul toward the Crawdads dugout. The Hickory Crawdads occupy the third, I mean the third base dugout throughout the course of the 2024 season. And it's been that way pretty much as long as I can remember. The visiting team, of course, on the first base side. But then again, when the clubhouses are just beyond the left field corner, you get the shorter walk when you're the home team. It's that breaking ball. Cut on and missed. Chi gets a strikeout to second of his appearance. Cade Ferguson goes down swinging. And that brings up Zach Arnold. Zach Arnold has popped a second. He got an RBI on a ground out in the third inning. Top of the fifth. So glad that you could join us from LP France Stadium as the first pitch taken for a strike on the outer third. Chi pours it right down the middle, 91 miles an hour. Count goes to 0 and 2. That's going to be a strikeout of Brian Chi, or for Brian Chi again as he's got three now. Two down in the inning quickly, and that brings up Troy Schreffler. Schreffler is halfway to a cycle, and he's got the tough one, the toughest one, arguably, out of the way. Single, stole the base, drove in a run, scored in the second, an RBI triple in the third. So that ball's going to be chopped foul. Want to say hello to at JJ Harmon 22 on X or Twitter, whatever your preference. Jared, thank you so much for tuning in on this Tuesday evening. It's that breaking ball. Schreffler gets a piece of it again, fouls it off behind home plate. Count 0 and 2. Jared, hopefully you'll join us often for Hickory Crawdads baseball on the Crawdads Radio Network, and then, of course, MILB TV. It's where you can find us for the home games. So that pitch is going to be fouled directly back to the screen. The Schreffler is going to step out of the box, try to collect his thoughts, 0-2, trying to hang on to a Perfect evening so far. Brian Chi wheels and fires the 0-2. 
Side breaking ball, hits sharply out to third, easily fields it, fires across in time, a one, two, three inning for Brian Chi. We're halfway through at LP Friends Stadium. We'll be back in just a bit for the Crawdads Radio Network. Bottom of the fifth inning, Jersey Shore with a 7-0 lead. Seven runs on nine hits, no errors for the Hickory Crawdads. 0-3-0 zero, zero as they bring up the bottom third of the order. Ben Blackwell, Ian Moeller, Jace Easley. As Braden Fosnott has been really steady. Been given plenty of offense to work with. He's been able to attack the strike zone. Hasn't had to nibble too awfully much. So that ball's going to be rolled foul back behind home plate. Blackwell flew out to right field his first time up. It's good to have people back in the ballpark again. It's good to be back in the ballpark again. So that ball's going to get rolled past Foss, not coming on to make the play as Eric Brito. He'll have time. He beats Blackwell by a step. Ian Moeller will step to the plate with one down. Moeller hit a sinking line drive to end the second inning. Foss not has scattered three hits in this ball game. And Been very steady. First pitch to Muller, taken for a strike, the 0-1. 15 seconds when there's nobody on base. You've got to deliver the baseball. Muller swings and misses. Count goes to 1-2. and two. I'll catch up with some folks that have sent emails my direction this evening. It's all part of the interactive broadcast that will continue throughout the course of this year on the Crawdads Radio Network. Foss not. Side ball hits sharply out to shortstop. A funky hop out at short. And Brian Rincon is not going to be able to make the play. I think that's going to be an error on Rincon. As that ball did come up a little funny on him, but a play that he should have made. So the one-out error will bring up Jace Easley. As Fosnott got the ball down in the zone, it was rolled out to shortstop, and, well, Rincon couldn't make the play. Over at first is Moeller, and that'll bring up Jace Easley, who flew out to right his only time up. Reyes holds the runner on at first as the pitch misses inside. I want to say hello to Calvin Dean this evening from South Haven, Mississippi, watching... A homegrown home plate umpire, Mr. Travis Michael, back behind home plate this evening. It's the pitch poured to the outer third for a strike. 
Thank you, Calvin, for tuning in, for chiming in this evening. Foss not sets, fires, pitch misses outside. Count goes to two and one. I want to say hello to Quincy Scott Sr. Checking out the action from Menifee, California. The home games will be streamed on MILB this season. As I'll be bringing the radio side on hickorycrawdads.com. That will simulcast with the video feed of the game. And then, of course, I'll be on the road for select games. There are, there are four towns in and around the South Atlantic League that are a reasonable enough trip for me to make to join the club on the weekends. So we'll have select weekend games on hickorycrawdads.com. Taking the lead over at first is Ian Moeller. The pitch cut on and missed. And there's two down in the inning, and that's going to bring us back to the top of the order for Cam Collett. For Fosnott, that's just his second strikeout of the ball game. As he's allowed his defense to work behind him. It's Colley, one for two in the ball game, a single and a fly out. Foss not. Strike one. I want to say hello to Alexa Ray Gist out of Longview, Texas. Blake and Alexa Ray tuning in this evening. Strong Texas contingent, as you might imagine, with the defending world champions. So it'll be time called by Cauley. And then Randy Gist out of Lubbock, Texas, home of Texas Tech and Lubbock Christian University. Go, chaps. Foss not. Side ball. Driven out to right field. That ball's got a chance of leaving the yard. It's going to be off the top of the wall. They're going to try to send the runner home, and the Crawdads are going to get on the board. Ian Moeller, rounded third, was sent home by Chad Comer, and it's an opposite field double for Cam Cawley. So Cawley missed a home run by about a foot and a half, maybe two feet. It's Gutierrez back in the second inning. Missed a home run by a couple of feet. So the ball yard seems to be carrying pretty well to right field this evening. Wouldn't surprise me if the Crawdads leave the yard in right field at some point this evening. So that's going to bring up Tucker Mitchell. So that ball is going to be chopped out to second. Fielded cleanly there by Eric Brito. The throw in time. Crawdads get on the board. They trail 7-1 as we go to the sixth here on the Crawdads Radio Network. We'll be right back.
Top of the sixth inning. As the Crawdads are on the board, they trail 7-1 to one as we go to the sixth inning. A new pitcher for the Crawdads, Adrian Rodriguez, a right-hander. Rodriguez, a 6'6", 215-pound right-hander out of New York, New York. 39th round pick in 2019 last year played for the Down Eastwood Ducks out of Kinston, North Carolina. For those of you that did not catch the news last season, Kinston, North Carolina, the Down East Wood Ducks, well, they're moving west. And I mean a good bit west. Is they're going to be moving into a new ballpark in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I mentioned Spartanburg, South Carolina previously as they were the host to the Spartanburg Phillies for a long, long time in the South Atlantic League. They'll play in the Carolina League, which is the A-ball league, as folks that follow the Wood Ducks know. Brand new ballpark being built in downtown Spartanburg. They will not play at Duncan Park, which many years have gone by since the last time professional baseball was played in that ballpark. In fact, the last time an organized team had been in Duncan Park that was not a college team in particular, was the, and I'm not joking when I say this, the Spartanburgers of the Coastal Plain League. Payoff pitch from Adrian Rodriguez. It's the fastball. Catches the inside edge. So it's going to be a strikeout of Eric Brito to get things started here in the second inning. It's the first strikeout for the Crawdad right-hander. That's going to bring up Amarion Boyd. Rodriguez on that fastball. How about 97? Rodriguez. It's that pitch fouled straight back. 95 miles an hour. The slider fouled out of the mid of the catcher, Ian Moeller. Count goes to 0-2. One more email that I got recently from all of you folks. Thank you for reaching out to me during the course of this broadcast. I want to say hello to Mike DeWitt out of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Mike, so great to know that you're tuning in this evening. Is that slider? They'll check him down to first. He did not go. Count goes to 1-2. and two. Kenosha, Wisconsin, if I'm not mistaken, now home to the Kenosha Kingfish of the North Woods League, Collegiate Wooden Bat League, formerly the Kenosha Twins of the Midwest League quite some time ago. As the pitch swung on and missed, Boyd, another strikeout victim. For two down, that's going to bring up Justin Crawford. Crawford got the offense going for, for Jersey Shore. A solo shot to left center field, went opposite way with it, and then hit a second ball pretty well to left that was caught in left field by Quincy Scott. Rodriguez, fastball, misses down. Crawford chops it foul. Count goes to one and one. We'll be checking the scoreboard here in just a little bit. Crawford's going to lift that foul out of play. 
in his first at bat before hitting the ball out of the yard in the first inning. He sent many a pitch over to the third base side down near the batting cage that's off the field at this point. The one-two from Rodriguez. Threw a changeup at 86 miles an hour. Crawford way out in front. Strikeout victim. Three straight punch outs for Adrian Rodriguez. So we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. A 7-1 lead for Jersey Shore. We'll be back in just a bit on the Crawdads Radio Network. Bottom of the sixth inning, we've got a new pitcher on for Jersey Shore. Daniel Harper has got the ball now as that concludes the night for Braden Fosnott. Fosnott is in line for the win if Jersey Shore can hang on to this lead. Daniel Harper, 6'3 right-hander. 17th round pick out of the University of Kentucky by way of Fairway, Kansas. Spent last year in Clearwater. Twenty twenty two draft for Harper. As the slider misses, count evens at one and one. So it'll be Sebastian Walcott, Jason Morabell, and Anthony Gutierrez. 3-4-5 in the order for the Crawdads. The pitch swung on and missed. It's Walcott. Fouls it into the mid of the catcher, Jordan Disson. And there's one down. Scores from around the South Atlantic League this evening. Of course, this game got started an hour early. The rationale for that is the game is going to be played at 11 a.m. tomorrow. That gets the guys another hour of recovery before getting back here very early tomorrow morning. So, as you might imagine, the rest of the league is behind about two or three innings. Top of the third inning, one nothing. Brooklyn leads Asheville. That game being played in Brooklyn. Top of the fourth, Winston-Salem Greensboro. Scoreless. Bottom of the third, Wilmington and Aberdeen. They're scoreless. Bowling Green and Greenville down in Greenville, South Carolina. It's a scoreless ball game. And Roman Hudson Valley was postponed because of wet grounds. They'll make that game up on Thursday. It's the pitch fouled out of the mid of Disson. There's more Bell. Two and one in the count. More Bell bounced to first and then bounced to first again. Or Fosnott was there to finish the play, receiving the throw. They'll check to first. Did not go. Three and one the count. It's 
That ball lifted into the infield. Arnold seems to have it measured. He'll make the catch. There's two down. And that brings up Anthony Gutierrez. Gutierrez, a double and a single. So he has a multi-hit game. He has half of the hits for the Crawdads. So they were able to piece together two hits last inning to scratch across a run. So we want to thank Sunbelt Reynolds for being a proud sponsor. of the Hickory Crawdads this year. I want to thank Black Tie Transportation. They are actually the out-of-town scoreboard sponsors. That ball lifted out into right field, coming on and making the catch is Cade Fergus. Six innings in the books here in Hickory. 7-1 Jersey Shore. We'll be back here on the Crawdads Radio Network. Top of the seventh inning here at LP Fran Stadium. Brian Rushing here with you. So glad you could join us on this Tuesday night, the opening night of the 2024 season for the Hickory Crawdads, the second half South Division champions from last year who went 43-21 and 21 in the second half of the year. Is that ball driven out to left field, and that ball is not coming back. That ball was hit over the Cadaver Alley sign. I think it might have been hit over the entire Catawba Valley. As Felix Reyes decided to change his night, he struck out three times. Well, he got four at-bats worth of swings there as he ready, set, and soared that one over the CVCC sign as it's now 8-1. to one. That pitch was centered, and Felix Reyes squared it up. Hit it about as far as you can really hit it. Second home run of the night for the Blue Claws, and it's now back to a seven-run ball game. That ball is going to be chopped out to shortstop. Played there by Cam Colley. The throw across in time. Broken bat. One down, and that brings up Brian Rincon. In a moment, keeping up with the black tie theme, black tie transportation, the, the transportation of choice for the Hickory Crawdads when they're on the road. We'll get to some of the MLB scores. It 
Some games haven't even gotten started. It's Anthony Rodriguez misses outside. The good news for the Crawdads is they've already struck out 10 Jersey Shore hitters. The bad news, they've also given up 10 hits and allowed eight runs to score. Not exactly the kind of night that the home crowd wanted on this opening night. Top of the sixth inning, the White Sox and the Guardians tied at five apiece. In Cincinnati, the Brewers have a 3-1 lead on the Reds. The Yankees trying to continue the misery of the Marlins. They lead 1-0 in the bottom of the third. It's the fastball from Rodriguez, 95, misses outside. Count goes to 3-1. and one. Blue Jays and the Mariners are scoreless in the bottom of the third. The Braves have a 1-0 advantage on the New York Mets, bottom of the second inning. Here's the 3-1 for Rodriguez, and that ball driven out to right field, drifting back in right field. It's going to be Jason Morbell, and there's two down in the inning. You know, yesterday we had a solar eclipse, and depending upon where you were in the country, it had varying degrees of completion of eclipse. Like some areas, the sun went virtually completely dark, obscured by the moon. Didn't really happen to that great a detail here in these parts. I'll tell you where I'm, what I'm getting to here in just a moment as Cade Fergus steps to the plate with two down here in the seventh inning. It's that breaking ball taken for a strike. If anything weird or wonky was supposed to happen because of the solar eclipse, nobody told Brandon Nimmo. Four for four last night, two homers, five RBI, as he helped the Mets get past the Braves as the Mets have now won four out of their last five games after starting the year. Well, not all that great. As Fergus is going to call time. An 8-1 to lead here in favor of Jersey Shore. So Adrian Rodriguez trying to get through his second full inning of relief here in the seventh. Here's the pitch. Fastball cut on and missed. They'll have to complete the play down to first. The throw from Moeller down to first in time. It's stretch time here in Hickory. An 8-1 lead for Jersey Shore. We'll be back in just a bit here on the Crawdads Radio Network. Bottom of the seventh inning. It's the Crawdads will have Quincy Scott, Ben Blackwell, Ian Moeller. Six, seven, eight in the order for the Hickory Crawdads. Trailing by seven in this one. Eight to one in favor of Jersey Shore. They have been ahead pretty much from the start here. Justin Crawford got the offense going an opposite field jack to left center field. A three spot in the second and the third. Really put the Crawdads on their heels. And then last inning, Felix Reyes hit a ball to left field about as far as you can. It's that ball hit sharply out to shortstop, fielded cleanly by Rincon. He throws across to Reyes. One pitch, one down here in the seventh. 
Scott stung it, but hit it right at Rincon. That brings up Ben Blackwell, who's 0 for 2 in the ballgame. Going to continue those scores, the partials from around Major League Baseball, the Dodgers and the Twins, top of the second. They're scoreless, scoreless in St. Louis between the Phillies and the Cardinals. 1-0 Astros over Kansas City. End of one. They're getting things cranked up in just a little while with the Athletics and the Rangers in Arlington. Arizona and the Colorado Rockies will face off at 8.40, 9.38. Rays and Angels, 9.45. Nationals and Giants. It's Blackwell. He's going to walk around for just a moment. So he's trying to get the feeling back in a foot. So he falls behind 0-2. One down here in the bottom of the seventh inning. 8-10-1 for Jersey Shore, 1-4-0 for the Dads. Here's the 1-2, breaking ball from Harper, misses. Lots of things to encourage folks to come out to baseball games here at LP Friends Stadium. I'll tell you more about that here in just a moment. It's Harper's pitch, misses outside. Ben Blackwell draws a one-out walk. Of course, tomorrow it's going to be education day here at the ballpark, so there'll be lots of screaming kids which I'm completely okay with, as long as they don't end up in the broadcast booth. That could be problematic for me. Smoller will step to the plate with one down. The 0 1 from Harper, taken for strike two at the knees. On Thursday, we'll have the traditional Thirsty Thursday specials available, presented by Focus News. People's Bank customers can also show their card for a discounted $6 ticket, which ain't too bad. Friday night, of course, will be a fireworks Friday night. That ball is going to make its way into the BTS Tires picnic deck over on the right field side. And finally, we've got some kids scrambling for a foul ball. That's what it's about. Kids racing to the foul ball. The pitch from Harper. Swung on and missed. Smoller goes down swinging. For Harper, that's his second strikeout. Of course, Braden Fosnott. Fosnott got through five innings, only struck out two batters. Harper's already struck out two, and he's just an inning and two-thirds into his outing. It's Jace Easley. will step to the plate. That ball bounced back up the middle. Ring cone will touch the second base bag to retire the side. A walk gets stranded. We're through seven here in Hickory. 8-1 in favor of Jersey Shore. We'll be back on the Crawdads Radio Network.
Johanse Morrell is on to pitch for the Hickory Crawdads. Morrell, a six foot, 230 pound right hander out of Samana, Dominican Republic. Played for Hickory last year, part of a trade back in 2022. Zach Arnold will be the first batter he faces. Adrian Rodriguez went two innings, gave up a hit. That was a solo shot from Felix Reyes. It's the pitch from Morrell, misses outside. Count goes to 2 0. Arnold in this contest, 0 for 3, does have a run driven in. That ball driven out to left field, coming on to make the catch. It's Quincy Scott, one down here in the eighth. That brings up Troy Schreffler. Schreffler, two for three in the ball game, a single, a triple, two runs driven home, a run scored in the stolen base. Not a bad night. The fastball from Morrell misses outside. Here's the pitch. 2 and 0. Sundays here at the ballpark. Another fastball misses down. Count works to 3-0. 2 o'clock start. Tonight a 6 o'clock start. Tomorrow, I mentioned it already, 11 o'clock. Be on the air at 10.45 tomorrow for you. 7 o'clock Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 2 p.m. Is that pitch right down LR Boulevard for strike one? That ball hit sharply out to right field. Schreffler's going to have himself a third hit on the night. He is certainly impressed here in this first ball game of the six this weekend to be played. There is a chance for rain on Thursday. That could make things a little awkward here. As far as rescheduling, shuffling the deck, if you will. It's the pitch from Morrell, misses down. The 11th hit of the ball game for Jersey Shore. Troy Schreffler has almost as many hits by himself as the entire Crawdads team at this point. Three to four in favor of the Crawdads. Runner not being held on at first, as you might imagine. The count evens at one and one as Morrell... Took a little something off of that one to get it over. Johansson Morrell sets, delivers. That ball hit back up the middle. It's another base knock. Back-to-back hits for Brito and Schreffler. Take us back to the top of the order for Marion Boyd. Boyd, he's got a base knock. In fact, I'm looking four, five, six... There's only one player in the starting lineup tonight for the Jersey Shore Blue Claws that do not have a base knock. Jamie Jaimez. Jose Jaimez will come out and have a conversation with the young right-hander. Twelve hits in the ball game. Brito has a pair of hits himself. Schreffler has three. Fergus has a knock. Rincon has a double. Disson has a single. Reyes with the home run. Crawford has two hits in the ball game. And then Amarion Boyd with the double in the second inning. Morrell, that ball lifted into center field. Quincy Scott has it measured. He'll make the catch, and there's two down. (laughs) 
The first six-game road trip of the season for the club will be next week against the Greensboro Grasshoppers, high-A affiliate of the Pittsburgh Pirates. That is where I plan on catching the club on the road for the first time this year. As I'll be making my way for the Friday, Saturday, Sunday matchups. That's part of the plan right now. The schedule. We've got it tentatively set. It's in the game programs here, the Crawdad Chronicles. Eventually, we'll be making that a little more public through social media, website, etc., etc. As some of my other broadcast duties are keeping me away for road games. But for all 66, I'm, I'm on the books to be here. As the pitch misses down and in, count goes to 2-1. and one. Johansson Morrell, the fourth pitcher for the Hickory Crawdads in this contest. It's right now. Mitch Pratt is on the hook for the loss. It's the pitch cut on and missed by Justin Crawford. Count evens at two and two. Morrell. What's in? The pitch. That ball rolled out in front of home plate. The play will be made easily enough by Ian Moeller as he takes the throw down to first where Tucker Mitchell waits. A couple of base knocks get stranded. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Eight to one in favor of Jersey Shore. We'll be back in just a bit here on the Crawdads Radio Network. Bottom of the eighth inning. Another pitcher on for Jersey Shore. Jack Dallas. We'll get to Dallas's particulars here in just a moment. First pitch strike. The Cam Cauley. Cauley has the lone run driven into the ball game as the breaking ball cut on and missed. An RBI double that just missed a home run by a couple feet. Jack Dallas, non-drafted free agent out of Lamar University. It's down in Beaumont, Texas. So that ball bounced right back up the middle. Going to be a base knock for Cam Cullen. Fifth hit of the ball game for the Crawdads. And that brings up Tucker Mitchell. Beaumont, Texas, the hometown of one Jay Bruce. 
course, spent had one of the more memorable home runs in Cincinnati Reds history, eventually spent some time with the Seattle Mariners, the New York Mets, et cetera, et cetera. Dallas out of Orange, Texas. It's the breaking ball misses. Split time last year at both levels of high of, of A baseball. Jersey Shore and Clearwater. Side ball is going to be lifted down the right field line. Does it have a chance of being fair? No, not quite. It's Tucker Mitchell missed extra bases by about six feet. The count one and one. It's the one one taken for a strike. It's the breaking ball misses down, evens at two and two. Cam Colley, the runner down at first. Side ball. Lifted high down the right field line. Coming on to make the catch in right field is Cade Fergus. And there's one down in the inning. Want to say hello to Coco Carraway. Checking out the action, streaming it from Midland, Texas. If I'm not mistaken, home to the Texas League Midland Rockhounds. As Collie takes the lead. Sebastian Walcott, 0 for 3 on the night. That breaking ball cut on and missed. A single run for Jersey Shore in the first, three in the second, three in the third, a solo shot in the seventh by Felix Reyes. That's been the difference. As Jersey Shore has been on top from start to finish in this one. So Walcott swings and misses on the 1-1. One -one. Falls behind, one ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Walcott swings and misses on three straight breaking balls. Strikes out for the third time in the contest. And that'll bring up Jason Marbell. Marbell 0 for 3 in the ball game. Of course, Coco Caraway doing what so many of you have done this evening. Made your first reach out to me on this broadcast. For about the first time in a decade, I believe it was 2015, was the last time we actually had a regular season game broadcast here for the Hickory Crawdads. And now that we have the capability of using Pixelot to bring the video streaming to you, we've been able to simulcast, and here we are. Really grateful to be a part of this throughout the, the course of this 2024 season. So that ball is going to be chopped foul. Two ball, one strike count. Of course, we won't have the video for the road. We will have for select road games, primarily on the weekends, the audio that I'll be bringing to you by way of hickorycrawdads.com. It's 
the pitch. Catches the inner third. The count goes to two and two. I'll give that email address out one more time, depending upon how much time I have here in this half inning. I'll also reset the X or Twitter handle for you. That ball hit out to second. Fielded there by Brito. Brito gets it over to Reyes, and the side is retired. We go to the ninth. Jersey Shore leads 8-1 to one here on the Crawdads Radio Network. We'll be right back. Out of the ninth inning, opening night here at LP Fran Stadium. Has been all blue claws, eight to one. So it'll be Felix Reyes, Jordan Disson, Brian Rincon, three, four, five in the order. For Jersey Shore, Johansi Morel on for his second inning of relief. Trying to see if he can keep this one where it is. A little off-speed pitch. Get me over to Reyes. Takes strike one. Reyes has been feast or famine this evening. Famine early, feast recently. Three strikeouts as that ball rolled out toward third. Easily fields, fires across in time. There's one down. And that'll bring up Jordan Disson. For those of you that want to send an email to me, and I would imagine that probably be more apropos to tomorrow or later on in the week, you can send that email to brush, brush, at hickorycrawdads.com. I'll say hello to Shea Blasser, checking out the action this evening from Lubbock, Texas. Love the Texas emails coming in. Of course, so many fans from near and far celebrating the Texas Rangers World Championship and having some exposure a long, long time ago to the Texas Rangers farm system. It's not like I'm coming in with a completely blank slate here, but... Through, through the year, I'll be catching up on a lot of my Texas Ranger knowledge and weaving stories from back a long time ago. That ball rolled just foul. Disson was inches away from extra bases. Disson, one of eight players with a base hit tonight. The only player that has not gotten a base hit is fifth in the order this inning, who we may or may not see. But it's always good to have folks from the state of Texas tuning in. This is my first 
broadcast of a Texas Rangers affiliate that I've been on the positive side of as that ball rolled out to shortstop, a broken bat. Disson is the second out. It's Cam Cawley makes the play for the second out of the ninth inning. That's going to bring up Brian Rincon. Latest update for the Rangers. They have a 1-0 lead over the Athletics. Side ball is going to be rolled foul over near the first base coach's box. Coaching staff for Jersey Shore, Greg Brodzinski is the field manager. One of the really notable names is that ball out to second. Blackwell gets it over in time. It's Adam Lent. Former slugger in the big leagues as that closes out the ninth inning for Jersey Shore. We go to the bottom of the ninth. It's an 8-1 lead for the Blue Claws. We'll be back in just a bit here on the Crawdads Radio Network. And with Sandstorm playing in the background, we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And this is a club that would need quite an uproar, quite a sandstorm to get back into this one. They're down by seven. Eight to one is Andrew Walling is on the pitch. Is that slow roller out to shortstop to throw over in time? One pitch, one out is Anthony Gutierrez. Grounds to short. I want to say hello to Michael Brewer checking out the action tonight in Horn Lake, Mississippi. Obviously, you're going to have a strong Texas contingent. I think Mississippi might be second. It's really been great to have all of you tuning in tonight. Quincy Scott, 0 for 3 in the ball game. He's hit it hard a couple times. Swings and misses. Andrew Walling, left-hander, 6'2", 231, a non-drafted free agent from Mississippi State by way of Vancouver, Washington. It's Walling, the 0-2, fastball misses up.
Andrew Wallen so far this season. 1-0 on the year with no ERA. Was 9-3 in his career with a 3.71 ERA. As that ball is going to be chopped toward the Crawdads dugout where it's speared by a Crawdads player. As Walling trying to clean things up on this Tuesday night. The breaking ball misses down. Count goes to two and two. For those of you that want to put this in your memory banks, maybe even give me a follow before we get out of here tonight, as you can do that on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, as the pitch fouled back to the screen. You can find me at What's Up B Rush PXP. That's at What's Up B Rush PXP. Hope you'll give me a follow. I'll certainly do so in kind. And we can stay in touch with one another throughout the course of the season. Anything you need to ask during the broadcast, I'll certainly try to do my f- best to research and get you good answers. So whether it's email or X, we can take this journey together, which I am really excited to be a part of. Walling, that ball out to third. Fielded by Zach Arnold to throw across in time to Reyes. And there's two down. As soon as we're done here, we will have a post-game show, about 10 minutes in length. We'll basically kind of update you on what transpired this evening for some of you that might have been tuning in late. This one, pretty one-sided. But we'll have that post-game show, 10 to 15 minutes tops every night following every game here for the Crawdads. 15 minutes before, 15 minutes tops at the end. It's the breaking ball. It's Ben Blackwell misses. Blackwell has walked in this ball game. It's the pitch from Walling misses at 94 miles an hour. Here's the 2-0. Misses down. Count works to 3-0. 3-0. Misses down. Blackwell draws a walk. And that's going to hand the baton over to Ian Moeller. Who is 0 for 3. Breaking ball from Walling. Missing just down. The 1-0 to Muller. That one misses outside. Obviously, the runner over at first, Ben Blackwell, not being held on. It's the Blue Claws willing to give away the free base to second. The Crawdads, probably in keeping with baseball's conventions, not going to make that move to second. Not unless the count runs full. Here's the pitch. Misses. Count goes to three and one. Good crowd. Well, a goodly amount of the crowd that showed up has stuck around. The three one from Wally. That ball hits sharply foul. Into the tarp. And the count goes full. 
So Blackwell will be going towards second on the pitch, not because he's trying to steal a base, but because, well, he's going to have to go to second anyway, whether the ball's put in play or not. Here's the pitch. Side ball grounded out to shortstop, fielded by Rincon to throw across in time. And that's the ball game. It's, it's an 8-1 win here on opening night at LP Fran Stadium for the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. When we come back on the other side, we'll have the postgame show on this Tuesday night here on the Crawdads Radio Network. We'll be right back. And we're back here at LP Fran Stadium. Crawdads postgame here on this Tuesday night. It was all Jersey Shore on opening night. They win 8-1 to one in a game that took two hours and 36 minutes. For the Blue Claws, eight runs on 12 hits, one error. For the Crawdads, one run on five hits, no errors. So the win goes to Braden Fosnott. Mitch Bratt takes the loss for the Crawdads. Things got started very early for Jersey Shore. Justin Crawford, an opposite field home run over the left field wall, left center field wall, some 375, 380 feet away to put Jersey Shore on top, one nothing. They would grow on that margin with three runs in the second, three runs in the third. They would have a 7 nothing lead before the Crawdads would even get on the board. That would happen in the fifth inning. Zian Moeller would score on an RBI double from Cam Cawley to make it a 7-1 ball game. Didn't take long for Jersey Shore to get back on the scoreboard. They would score their eighth run of the contest, their final run of the contest, as Felix Reyes hit a solo home run. As in the ball game, Troy Schreffler, the designated hitter tonight for the Blue Claws, had the big night. Two singles, a triple, a run scored, two runs driven in, a stolen base, as he was really good tonight. And when you've got eight starters out of the nine guys in the batting order that all collect a hit, it's going to be a productive night for your club. It was for the Blue Claws as they win 8-1. to one. You take a look at the other side for the Crawdads. Well, Anthony Gutierrez, he had a multi-hit ball game, as did Cam Cawley. Gutierrez had a double. Cawley had a double. They both had singles. Cawley did drive home the run 
in the fifth inning to get the crawdads on the board. But it just simply was not to be as this offense is still struggling a little bit. And perhaps tomorrow with a short turnaround time, an 11 o'clock first pitch, maybe the fortunes get reversed a little bit for this Crawdads Club on Education Day as it'll be a matchup that takes place at 11 a.m. We'll be on the air at 1045 tomorrow for these two clubs to face off against one another where it should be Luis Ramirez for the Crawdads facing off against Elberson Castellano. So it'll be the right-hander in Castellano taking on the right-hander in Luis Ramirez. It's game two of the six-game set between the two clubs. We'll be on the air at 1045 tomorrow morning for that 11 a.m. first pitch. Education day. If you've got some kids and you've got a Wednesday free, come out and watch some of the action tomorrow. And then, of course, the rest of the week we'll have Thursday, Friday, Saturday action at 7 o'clock, 2 o'clock on Sunday. As that brings our night to a close this evening, the Jersey Shore Blue Claws ruin opening night here in Hickory for the Crawdads as they win 8-1 to one here on the Crawdads Radio Network. So many people I want to thank for our first foray in the regular season of bringing you internet streaming of audio and video here on MILB, hickorycrawdads.com. I want to thank Douglas Lacasio, Ashley Salinas for their work in helping make this happen. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to bring you the action. Thank you for all of your interaction throughout the evening, the emails, the posts, the tweets, whatever you want to call it. Hopefully we'll get a chance to do this tomorrow in many, many games. 65 more remaining and surely we're going to see some wins on the board for this Crawdads Club in the not-too-distant future. As it's an 8-1 win tonight for Jersey Shore. So we're back tomorrow, mor- tomorrow morning at 10.45 a.m. This is Brian Rushing signing out from L.P. France Stadium. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Good night.